Now, disqualified independent presidential aspirant Kofi Karanting has tasked the Electoral Commission to digitize uh, their way of letting presidential aspirants file their nominations. Kofi Karanting, who was disqualified by the Electoral Commission uh, in his bid to contest the 2020 election, said he didn't forge any signatures. Now, as you know, the EC had made that claim against him, and they say they have forwarded this to the police CID for investigations. Well, he's contesting that. Earlier today, he's been addressing the press, but today he is in our studio to talk more about this. Mr. Karanting, you're welcome. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. You I imagine well. you must be so disappointed because you were so um, eager, eager uh, mm -hmm. to contest the December 7 um, the elections, you know, when the first time we spoke. That's correct, but we not we disappointed in the system. Mm -hmm. We're not disappointed in our bid because it's not over yet. We're still fighting to get us on the ballot. So we are hopeful that we're going to you say you're still fighting to get on the ballot? That's correct. Because what we hear from the EC is that you allegedly forged your signatures. That has been forwarded to the police CID for investigation. First of all, how do you react to that? Did you forge well, those signatures? I mean, of course, uh, it's, it's as ridiculous as that sounds. I mean, who goes out, who travels 3,000 miles, right? Comes to Ghana and forges uh, signatures on your nomination forms. That's ridiculous. I mean, uh, nobody did that. Uh, what, what happened is, as we were told by the EC, was there were duplications in entries on our forms. Our same entries on our forms showed up on the CPP side. Mm -hmm. And when we got to EC and they showed that to us the first time, what we did say was because Ivor Greenstreet, who's a great friend of mine, he sat next to me with his catalog, party catalog with all the names of his executives in the Western North region. And the names tallied with the names on my forms. How that was, uh, we yet to but find out. But that's a question on everybody's lips. How did that happen? Well, this is, why, this is why we're saying that the EC should be helping us find out who the culprit is. Because who, who now, just so you get the <laughs> true picture, mm. 19 entries, mm. all CPP candidates, all CPP executives. Out of 64,000 registered voters in the Western North, we could not find anybody else but just, you got to be CPP candidate, I mean, uh, rep, and not only that, you have to be an executive. But that also shows that you did not ensure due diligence uh, before presenting your documents, because it's incumbent on you to ensure that you have your signatures in place, everything in place, before you submit it to the commission. Well, that's another uh, where there's a misconception. Uh, do you, you obviously, you haven't seen the forms, and you don't know what how they work. How they? How does it okay. work? Okay. So if because if you did, uh, then you wouldn't make that statement. So let me just go over a couple of things with you. There are 145 pages mm -hmm. in a digitized world. Dr. Bamia, where are you? Digitized, 145 pages, where the EC could not have a fillable PDF form on the computer where you hit a button, bip, and it goes. You have to fill 145 pages and then make three extra copies. So you have four copies. No wonder all our trees are disappearing, right? All that paper. So now listen to this. And they almost follow you with a scalpel to make sure that you don't cross a T, you don't dot an I, hey, you disqualify. What kind of process is that? In an electoral commissioner where you should be helping people, prepping people, developing people, leading people to get into the arena of democracy. I understand you. So mistakes are expected. You are expected to be diligent, but mistakes are expected. Did the EC give you an opportunity to correct your mistakes? They gave us an opportunity Saturday afternoon to go and correct and be back as Sunday morning, which we did. We came and they said, yeah, we're not going to accept your forms. So you've been disqualified, and your matter has been taken up by the police CID. Have you been invited to the police CID for interrogation? I'm waiting for it. You're waiting to be invited? I'm waiting to be invited, of course, to find out why they invited me. They should be getting in contact with this uh, uh, EC to find out who the culprit is. Mm. Obviously, listen, 
you cannot name one presidential candidate who goes out to all the 267 districts to get signatures done. And just to correct your point, are you familiar with the 1422s? Nope. Okay, the 1422 is the code that you send, it's the, uh, uh, the EC uh, portal. Yes. You yes. put in 1422 and your ID number, mm -hmm. voter ID number, yeah. and it spits out everything about you, mm -hmm. right? Right. To that end, we verified all the forms. So everything on our forms were verified four times mm -hmm. before it ended up with EC. And everything came out correct. Now the big question is, is who gives their ID card, not one person, not two, maybe two, maybe three, but 19 entries, all CPP, and CPP executives on our forms. So what's your suspicion, Mr. Corante? Well, obviously, listen, your guess is as good as mine, but I could tell you this for a, sh for a fact, guaranteed. We didn't do that. So who did it? Well, that's what we are saying, that the powers that be, the EC, should be aligning with us, working with us, to find out who did it so they could prosecute them. I see. You see, but this is what blows my mind, that the EC is so quick to disqualify us on something. They are criminalizing us. We are the victims. <laughs> something like this has happened to us where, hey, they should be coming together to help us fix this thing so we could get back on the back. Oh, they, they're quick to get out of here. Uh, okay, let's talk about the problem which has brought us to uh, um, this uh, moment. The fact that the EC is accusing you or your party or whoever is following you or manipulating the process by forging signatures and as it is what we are told is that you forged cp signatures of cpp members isn't that the case well they say that the form well yeah, allegedly. Go ahead, allegedly. allegedly okay so you said the ec gave you the opportunity to correct the mistakes correct. on saturday correct and submit the forms on sunday correct did you do that Absolutely. And so how come you were disqualified again? That would be a question you need to ask Ms. Menser and her commissioners. So are you telling me that you corrected the anomalies by removing the CPP names and putting names of we people got who with endorsed our, you? We got with our reps and that very night we got a car to come around uh, to uh, the city with uh, new entries. Mm. And we got the signatures and we submitted it uh, and the next morning at EC but Dr. Serbwa says, no, incidentally, should you know, this is the same Dr. Serbwa who made an excuse after EC made 84,000 duplicated entries on the EC registration forms. Mm -hmm. They came and spoke to the Ghanaian people and asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We were going to fix this. September 23rd, you remember? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, you remember. So what happens? What is good? for the what is good, good for, for the, the goose, goose is good for the gander suddenly it's not good for kofi granting oh my gosh <laughs> ain't there so something let's talk about what you're doing right now you said you're still contesting the ec on this particular well, matter we, what are we, you doing we are hoping that the ec will come to the realization that this has been a true perfect scenario of foul play so you're not uh, engaging this ec you're just sitting down hoping that no, we engage in them we send, we send them a letter which incidentally ended up on the media they didn't even respond to us they just felt the need to hey uh forget kofi quarantine let's just talk to the media hey yes. listen this has been an unfair treatment of us on the ballot mm -hmm. and i get a feeling they just don't want me on the ballot okay so you feel like you're being unfairly treated by absolutely the so you've written officially to them asking them what exactly to put me on a ballot and stop this based on what based on the fact that we didn't commit any fraud i mean who does that i mean honestly everything aside though you would think that i would come <coughs> all the to this point go and put all the shekels that i have together hundred thousand cities and go just to forge signatures who believes that okay maybe it was a mistake but as some would say or argue uh, you weren't diligent enough perhaps perhaps not but um i'm still curious to understand what you're seeking the ec to do to overturn its decision because we've been told by the commission that they are preparing the ballots and as far as they're concerned they have 12 candidates on the ballot well you're looking at the 13th one <laughs>
<laughs> How is that going to? Hey, what is that? I, I just going to conjure that. I think we're just going to conjure no, that. No, we're not. But listen, if, uh, listen. I think you see, this is what it's beautiful about a democracy. Mm -hmm. If you have honestly uh, mistreated someone, dispositioned someone for an error you have made in judgment, this is an excessive abuse of discretionary power. Disqualify me because it's something we did not do. We don't even know how it happened. That 19 entries on our forms would be the same exact entries on the CPP forms. Doesn't that blow your mind? Who does that? If I were dumb enough to make a mistake like that, will I pick the same people on the CPP forms on my form? You know you have to investigate this. And for a lecture commission that talks about democracy and talks about how things ought to be done right, what we are saying is, is they, sh they need to go further. They should not just say, oh, we're going to get Kofi Kwan to speak with CID. No, this is something they need to correct mm. because there is a possibility it could happen again. All right. Now, be that as it may, we are somewhat 39 days away from the elections. That's correct. Are you very, very, very convinced that your name will be on the ballot? I am, and it should be. Why are you so convinced? I mean, what's the because basis we've for your done conviction? nothing wrong? Don't you understand? But you, the EC you speak has not responded if, to your. So is it okay? So first of all, I think the doubt is in your mind. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. The no, doubt no. Is in but your... you say you have officially written to the EC we have. on this matter. Th that's You're not correct. contesting them in court. You're not taking them up well, anywhere we're else. We're giving them a chance to correct, and if that doesn't happen, then of course counsel will step in. But I think this so you're is considering so legal action if the EC does not. Well, at you know, some point, obviously, because consent. of the fact that this is so blatantly wrong on their side to disqualify us, that it's just so obvious we wouldn't even think the EC would even think twice about putting us on a ballot. You know, you, 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 is, there's, there's, this is not. One person made an error and four. This is 19 entries all of the same party and all executive members who happen to be on their sheets on our entries. There is something is up. Okay, all right. So you're waiting to hear from the EC Absolutely. on your particular concern. I okay, so as I said, 39 days to the election, we're not seeing you on the ground. I mean, your colleagues are crisscrossing the country trying to win the hearts and minds of Ghanaians. We don't see anything. Do you, aren't you running out of time? Aren't you concerned when, at when all? When you say we're not seeing anything, it's, it's almost In terms as if, of campaigning, well, in terms of selling your message, what is your message to the people? I can't even tell if you ask me today. Okay, so maybe uh, we're not your favorite candidate, but if everybody who is following us knows uh, that, listen, we talk about the new vision for Ghana. We want to change Ghana. We want Ghana to work again. We want uh, unemployed youth to get jobs from manufacturing, from factories. We want law and order to work. We don't want um, uh, 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 foreigners just coming into our country in droves and disrespecting our people, our land, and everything we stand for. They're taking over this land. And what, one of the big things I stand for is for us to be able to seize back this country and put it in order. They're selling this country away, and you know that. We don't have a national development plan. Until we have that, this uh, jokers of uh, 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 manifesto, you know, the paper they call manifesto, it's not going to work. Okay? Mm -hmm. Manifestos is not what we build for. We build for a national development plan. We need a long-term vision. 20, 30, 50 year plan for Ghana. And we need people who have a science based, data driven, human centered consciousness to leadership. Till we get that done, Ghana is not going to go anywhere. And you know that. That's why we still have the filth that we have around the country. All right. Okay. We'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much, uh, independent uh, presidential aspirant. Uh, who was disqualified by the EC, he says he's not giving up Kofi Quarantine there. Thank you so much again, Thanks. Uh, Thanks Mr. Quarantine.